Yo. So I'm on lunch break. Not much of a break. It's definitely a late lunch day. Two days in a row had an exciting day at work, which in the data center world is a really, really bad thing. Uh, if everything goes well, everything's boring and mundane and planned. If things actually get exciting, then consider yourself fortunate when everyone walks away alive and uninjured. Yesterday was just a fire drill that didn't go well and the equipment didn't operate and lots of stuff happened and maintaining building integrity while no one knows really what's going on and uh, the system's not operating the way you intended. That's manageable. Today, on the other hand, we had uh, some equipment testing going on, so contractors on site performing factory maintenance and testing, and the fire system goes off in the room that they were working. You know, that's where our notifiers go. So that's respond to an incident that if that happens, then there's a great likelihood of physical injury and equipment damage and a lot of bad stuff. So, uh, yeah. Fortunately, it was a error in operation uh, and in the, probably the safest way possible. So as far as something catastrophic happening, it happened in the best way possible. Uh, no one was hurt. The uh, most injury w that was uh, received anyone was uh, an ego, which that's okay. It's just the feelings that get hurt. That's a grand, grand day. Uh, this equipment was uh, some bat a battery string for a building, so you understand the potential shock or electrical hazard. You know, getting shocked by your own car's battery if you circuit the ground, it'll make your bracelet go hot, burn you real bad. Well, this is a set of batteries that uh, multiply the volts by 50 times. It's a 500 volt string with the capacity to sustain a building for 30 for 30 minutes. If that goes bad, then that's death, very likely. But uh, fortunately, it failed safe. So, yeah, just not the kind of excitement you want. And this is generally about the tone and the, the level of excitement I allow myself to get in those situations because getting frantic and panicky won't help anyone. Uh, you have to take the situation for, situation for what it is. Not what it should be, not what it could be, but what it is. Especially when you're responding to an area that's full of unknowns. So, when we got the alarm, first step is assess where it's located. Get there as soon as possible. So, me and my coworker running down to the basement. Along the way, grab a fire extinguisher rated for the potential hazards. Get there, first question. Is everyone okay? Once everyone's okay, then what's the status of the equipment? Get everything shut down in a manner that's safe uh, and uh, sustains the needs of the building. Go on from there. But uh, not everyone handles it that way. You know, a lot of the guys involved, uh, frankly, uh, in my own words, mishandle it. Uh, they get excited. They start making jokes out of snarky frustration, which only confuses the area. You know, makes some sort of priority other than human life, as if the building is more important. It's not. Uh, but yeah, it's an it's an interesting and dynamic environment that uh, well, kind of tests your own metal and your own resolve of understanding what's going on what needs to happen versus what should happen uh you know can you think clearly and critically in the moment and so over the past hour or two it's noon 30 which is about two hours after what i normally uh eat lunch i generally eat lunch around 10 30 11 because my day starts at 3 30 in the morning but yeah that gets postponed and working with the guys and figuring out what happened why it happened uh, was it a failure of the equipment? Was it a failure of procedure? Was it a human error? Uh, and then that gets documented and transferred to the chains of uh, chains of uh, management as 
as is requisite for the uh, different company that's involved and ours so it's an interesting process uh, I guess I'll start from the beginning when it when responding to that situation my priorities are as follows human life building needs because that's my job human life first and foremost i don't care what the environment is if there's people involved they need to be safe and secured and given what they need after in a, a catastrophic occurrence then what's my role in even being involved i'm a facilities engineer my job is to maintain and operate the facility as its needs are required so make sure my building's okay even though we had a catastrophic failure of equipment that's taken care of okay then the specific equipment and what it needs that's being worked on that's taken care of and then once those those operation human element and continued operation are are squared away or accounted for and are where they need to be then then the frivolous things happen which is figuring out what happened and why it happened uh in my position i don't have to worry about that uh, I wasn't the one doing the uh, maintenance. I'm not the one uh, responsible for the building and, and management set setting. I'm an operator and an engineer. But uh, yeah, it's a uh, it's an interesting uh, dichotomy. So it's a uh, it's been an interesting couple of days. That's for sure. Excitement in the data center world is such a bad bad thing. But everyone's safe, everyone's uninjured, looks like everyone will be able to keep their job. All of which are on the line if things aren't normal. So, just kind of a, a little uh, sit rep on a not-so-normal day. Catch you all later. Well, the day's over and the situation is sorted out. It's just one of those uh, examples of the bad things that can really happen when you're dealing with individuals who aren't qualified to do the work in the environment that they're in. Uh, in this circumstance, there was one individual involved on the contractor's team that was a transfer from a different team to help fill a gap in, in their uh, manpower to fill this contract. And so he was transferred in from another team uh, wasn't didn't have familiarity or training on the equipment that they were using for testing and so was being used to uh, do work that he wasn't wasn't competent in nor did he uh, have the full understanding of the environment he was working in so he uh, they were using a connector type that he was not familiar with to secure the electrical connections from the batteries to the load bank system and when he was given the task to connect the uh, extension leads to the uh, to the load bank, he you know red to red, black to black, it's color coded, but they didn't engineer the connectors in a way that you couldn't uh, in a way that you couldn't mix them, and so he uh, plugged he plugged in the red to the red terminal. And when he made uh, went to go plug it into the black, he couldn't get his black whip plugged into the black terminals. And so to see if he had a failure on the whip end or if it was just his own own error, he tries to plug tries the mechanical connection uh, and tries the black whip into the red plug. At that moment, that was fine. The circuit wasn't energized. But what he did was the negative side of the battery went to a cord that was now stretching to the positive side of the battery. And the guy he was working with, his lead, was making the final connections from the pigtails that come off the battery bank to the extension cord that goes to the, uh, the load bank. And so, unbeknownst to his lead, his, uh, his assistant had created a full circuit loop and when he went to plug those uh, in, he got full-on Doc Brown from Back to the Future. Fortunately, he didn't get shocked, but there was a big old arc flash and molten copper and uh, 520 volts of uh, DC current. 
hidden atmosphere. And so fortunately they were using, you know, the type of connections that they were are rated for that kind of work. They're safety engineered to those systems. So when the arc flash occurred during the connection points, there was adequate shielding involved to protect the technician's hands. If it had been an open circuit, if it had been an open lug to an open lug, uh, the technician making that connection probably would have lost his hand, if not his life. But, like I said, we were fortunate on this occurrence and that didn't happen. So, and the guy that was, uh, that made the mistake, it was an honest mistake, it was, he wasn't, you know, it wasn't out of any slack or malice on his part, he simply didn't know better. You know, he didn't realize what those, he didn't know what was going on as far as the, the energy that was being in, involved in the testing. He just was told to go plug in wires, so he went to plug in wires. Uh, and that was, that was the end of his thought, you know, okay, I got to plug it in. Oh, it's not plugging in. Well, I'll, instead of bothering my boss, I'll, I'll see if I can solve the problem. I'll s figure out where the problem lies, you know, the bottom lugger or the connector. And in that moment, plug in the wrong connector into the wrong receptacle at the right time. Boom. So it's, I uh, shared this with lots of friends and family in the environments that I work in, in the industrial field. It, it, life and death can, you, you can die by an honest mistake. You know, it takes one guy not understanding the scope of the work that's being conducted to make one honest mistake trying to fill a gap that he sees but he doesn't understand. And those kind of things happen. Circuits are made that were never supposed to be made. Uh, and then physics takes over. You've allowed a pathway for energy to be transferred. It will transfer from highest concentration to lowest. Even if it's a catastrophic, it doesn't care whose resume or whose hands are attached to what. It just does what it will do. And so, uh, yeah. But, you know, hours removed, all the bosses involved, lots of uh, forensic uh, analysis on how it happened. I mean, I was the guy working with the team that that the contracting team so I was the one doing the forensics on it verifying okay so the lead didn't understand how it was possible because he was again assuming that his his uh, assistant had plugged everything in correctly you know if the leads were where they belonged there was no possible way for this to have happened and so you know we're walking through it and at that time his lead had come back from taking care of another or his assistant sorry to come back from another you know dealing with another part and you know we asked him you know, so what what you know his boss was adding lead, uh, asking leading questions which isn't good in these circumstances asking questions of like the black wire was plugged into black terminal right that's the wrong question in these kind of circumstances because it's leading it's giving the answer that should be there but you can't deal in what should be you have sorry you can't deal in what should be you have to deal in the circumstance of what was and so I, you know, I interjected, tell me what was the conditions of these leads terminated to the load bank at the moment of the arc flash, at the moment of where we had that discharge between those two connecting lines. And, you know, he said, well, no, at, you know, right at that moment, I had just plugged in the black cable to the red lug. Okay. Then that, you know, that makes all the difference. And uh, the guy did the right thing. He didn't cover his ass. He didn't lie. And that's... Ethics aside, you know, lying is bad. I hope we can all agree on that. That's... You shouldn't do that. But in industry, you can't. You, you can lie, but the equipment never will. There's... When it comes to industry and there's lies and there's hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars invested in this process... The equipment will tell you everything that went on, exactly how it happened. And in facilities that I work in, there's cameras every eight feet. You will be there. Everything you do is on camera. So the guy did the right thing in all circumstances, which was told the truth. Oh, no. At that moment, I plugged in the red to the black. And this speaks to the guy's non-technical training of 
he didn't understand why that was wrong. He was just, oh yeah, yeah, I did that. Not understanding why, that he was the cause of this, of this, uh, this discharge. Uh, but that's handled through his team. Uh, handled way above my and you know into my management sector of they make the request of which contractors go where I give my report to my boss who gives it to his boss who gives it to the director who makes the decision on which contract yada 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 but the point of that is you know they'll both the, the company the contractor involved did everything right as far as reconciling the situation when that happens, you step away from the equipment, leave it lay as it, you know, in the safest, take it to the safe condition and leave it be for for uh, forensics to come in to figure out why, what is what's important than why, yeah, so. Just an interesting day all around. Ugh, interesting is putting it lightly. But yeah, and it, at this point I think I, I I feel it, you know, I can, I hope it shows in the video. I'm, I'm able to be more emotionally involved in those situations. It's just full on Vulcan. Facts only matter. Opinions don't. Uh, to making assumptions or having anecdotal uh, comparisons are right out and completely counterproductive. It's dealing in what is, not what was or what should be. But yeah, just... One of those days at work, you know, but, uh, yeah, it, it's something good to reflect on and remember the, for, you know, a guy like me in the field, you know, we're human, mistakes will happen, uh, but man, it really, really matters how you deal with them. Whether you're a responding person to the incident or the cause of it, you know, the person that that created the occurrence or the outage or whatever whatever it is you know you have to be honest you have to uh, and in environments like this I mean that's one of the topics of discussion was who's gonna lose their job because in the in, in industrial environments and in data center environments when it's a, especially if it's a medical hospital my work environment uh, every day your life and your career is on the line 100% uptime, perfect execution. That is what is normal. That's not a attaboy, congratulations, you did everything perfect this year, you get a bonus, it's you did everything perfect this year, you're not fired. No, it's That's just the industry and the standards that you have to operate when you're dealing with life and death on every aspect of the entire process. The entire process of everything involved points to and directs human heartbeats. Whether that's the guys working on the equipment that support the process or the end result of the process which is a data center that keeps doctors informed on what the real life situations of their patients are doing. Whether that's on the operating table or nurses doing, uh, doing medical checks or whatever. That's the the criticality of the facilities I work in and in many other areas of industry but there's when it comes to the dealing in the applied sciences of the industry and you know these big process environments uh, it's not about being strict or mean on the human involvement on the technical side on the the, the 200 pound gorillas getting their hands on the system it's that's the real life cost of the physics that's involved uh, electricity doesn't care who you are who loves you who's depending upon you to bring home the income or come home alive or well uh, if you give it a path to discharge it will whether that's through you or through the engineered areas of the actual operation of the equipment and you have to have an understanding of everything that's going on to be able to conduct yourself in that environment safely and repeatedly over a course of action. And it's it's not for everyone. That doesn't make you a bad person if you can't do it. But if you can't do it, you have to leave that environment. You will cost human life. Today we were blessed. Today there was, you know, there was 
way more that could have gone wrong that didn't. And that's huge. Backing in. So, at least I get to end a day with an occurrence like this on a positive note of no one got hurt and people really would, could have died. So, uh, yeah, that's the reality of my work environment, reality of many other people that work and live in industry that keep, uh, keep the foundations of our societies operating, you know, things you take for granted. It's uh, just one of those unseen costs, but very, very real.